Mm-hmm. So Alberta? Uh, uh, actually in uh, British Columbia, Vancouver. British Columbia. Near Vancouver. Vancouver. Oh, Vancouver is gorgeous. Not quite in the city. I'm actually sort of like in a more rural area, I guess. Sure. Very cool. I don't think I've ever met a Canadian I didn't like, especially from the western side of the country. So, All right. Welcome again to another game cast here by Laughing Games and Falcon Paladin. It's going to be Caleb Arrakis versus a future on Parasite, the latter edition. Bottom right-hand corner, it's going to be the Red Zerg player, Caleb Arrakis. All right. And spawning up in the top left-hand side of the map, I believe also on Rise Esports, it's future. Correct me if I'm wrong there. He has been bouncing a little bit. So. I mean... <laughs> In this game, they're both in the uh, nice clan, so... Yes. Uh, uh, yep, Ryze. Features right. from Ryze. Yeah, so this may just be a practice match for them. I'm not 100% sure, but... I mean, if we're looking at this game, it's Parasite, so it's one of the bigger maps. And look at this. Future's actually going for a CC first. Yes, I like it. I like it when Terran and Protoss players are like, Hey, I can go, uh, go uh, hatch first as well with my version of what a hatch is, and here we go. Try to shut that sucker down. And actually, this was a pool first out of Caleb. So no. <laughs> <laughs> I came down to check the timing on the hatch and said, oh, hold on. Yeah, that I was did. definitely, Thirdlings are on the way. Future might be in a little bit of trouble here. I didn't notice that either. I mean, the reason why Future is doing this is because Parasite is such a big map. It will take a while for the Lings to get there. I think the CC will actually be done by the time the Lings get there. So, I mean... And it's not like this is a super aggression after this, but we'll just wait and see whether uh, Future goes into something that's like a reactor and then a factory without a Marine or a Reaper. That would just be terrible. There is no way you can skip Reaper or Marine on this. I mean, you almost have to go Reaper if you go Command Center first, just because a Marine can't stop any Zerglings that come across. But look at this, Command Center done. And then you just wall off and the Lynx can't really do anything but force a lift off. But the Reaper is going to be able enough to get rid of them. So this is well played. I don't know what you do to stop this as a Zerg player if your Terran opponent goes Command Center first. I really don't. I think you just have to accept it. I mean... Yeah, scout it, go for a quick three-hatch yourself, and just move into the macro. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there's not much else to do. I mean, he is going to try and pick <gasps> off this SCV. That would be nice. Uh, future Got trying him. to run it, but nowhere to run there. As the, uh, uh, that's just... It's just such bad luck because the SCV is just kind of running around and sometimes it's available to hit and sometimes it's not. It just happened to go to that side outside of the inside of the factory and get killed. Yeah, Future tried to get it so that it would uh, go over to safety there, but it didn't. RNG was not on his side with that one. No, super tragic. I like how Caleb split the lings out so the Reaper doesn't know where they all are and chase them down and kill them on the way home. That was good play. Yeah, that's nice. That, that makes the Terran player feel uneasy too because they're like, all right, where'd these things go? Are they still on my side of the map hiding out somewhere? Or? Okay. Absolutely not. They ran all the way home. <laughs> okay, so uh, yeah, like you said, third base is on the way for Caleb here. And then uh, starting to spread that creep. I mean, Parasite, this is why it's kind of, but dare I say, ballsy for future to go for something like this. Because, I mean, most Terrans on a map like Parasite, they want to go for like a pretty quick aggression and shut the Zerg down before they get really comfortable, I think. Mm -hmm. I mean, so the fact that Caleb's gone for this shows, this, or Future is gone for this, pardon me, shows that he's pretty confident. And he's got a lot of minerals too, so I wouldn't be surprised if we see a third CC as well. Yeah, it looks like he's floating, yeah, about 300 or so. But oh, wait a oh, second. Fusion core. Okay. Oh, oh, never mind. Oh my god. Uh, the Lings uh, got in and just ruined our day. Oh, uh, how? What? Oh, uh, they scouted it. Why? Or. Did they, well, he cancelled it. So, uh, looking at the vision here, Caleb never actually saw a fusion core. He saw a Banshee cloak research start. Hmm. And now we've got a Viking on the way. So the question is, is this going to be a Liberator range, or is this going to be a battle cruiser? Because the builds uh, are exactly the same. Yeah. I honestly think it was going to be battle cruiser, and the Lings got in, and Future was just like, I'm not going to take any chances at this point. Well, I don't want... He started a new fusion core. Wait! Oh, he did! Yeah, in he cancelled it and just built it somewhere else. <laughs> Alright, well, uh, in this case, I don't know, Liberator range is kind of boring against Zerg. I really don't see much utility for it. I mean, that this is something that I've actually wondered. I mean, Terran's just really stopped going for Liberator range, but I mean, I feel like it's still pretty good, but then battle cruisers are also exciting, and we, we know the answer <gasps> now. There it is. Battle Cruiser Operational, coming out of the one starport that Future is rolling with right now. So, single port 
battle cruiser. Overlord comes in, gets killed before it scouts anything. These Hellions, so many speedlings are out for Kayla. These Hellions are toast. Future questioning the number of lings out, maybe? <laughs> this Hellion is getting way too many kills. He's got six before he goes down. I don't, I, I, okay, I don't like to be someone who claims to be an expert at anything, but I may battle cruiser rush 90% of my TBZs. <laughs> yes, that's so awesome. And so I'm pretty sure I, you don't commit into a lot of battle cruisers for here from future. You just want to make the Zerg freak out that there's battle cruisers, but I could be wrong. He could be going for more, but he's starting a Ghost Academy. So the battle cruisers are to make the Zerg freak out partially because if the Zerg makes like 10 corruptors because they think you're going mass BCs, then uh, it's, it's not going to go good for them. Yeah, suddenly the Corruptor's useless against a largely ground army now. Oops. But, uh, yeah, I, I oh, mean, this is working jumps out. He BC. Oh, that's not... I don't... Okay. I mean, there's right, not well. much anti-air for the Zerg yet, so he's going to settle for some drone kills. And he is just going for the 1 BC. This Sometimes players go for, like, 1 to 3. I mean, there's not, like, a common battle cruiser rush, but... Yeah. Uh, he is going to be following this up with... I mean, Future's playing weird. Like, uh, he's going for... Did he get... He has gone double armor. He's got a Ghost Academy. He's now making another battle cruiser. but is this going to be like Mass Ghost Mech or something? I sure hope so. That'd be a lot of fun. <laughs> and then battle Cruiser just... trying to kill this fourth base by himself. He does have enough DPS to actually kill it while it's building. Um, I mean, but Queens. The, and the there's queens no jump the since he jumped in, so he's going to have yeah. to uh, sort of... I mean, battle cruisers fly, but they almost waddle away. They do, and it was Nathanis that showed me the correct way to use Battle Cruiser is you slow walk them over, do your attacking, and then jump out to safety. Yeah, that that's what uh, I personally think is the best strategy, but I guess Parasite is a big map, and Future's doing something that I've honestly never seen before with just making Battle Cruisers, getting a Ghost Academy, and then Mech. So, like, th he's got three factories, three uh, barracks, a Ghost Academy, and now he's going double eBay. And he's making another BC. Let's not forget about that. <laughs> I'm not sure what the weirdest part of this game is. I am on board with the weirdness. <laughs> weirdness is great in StarCraft. Spire on the way from Caleb. So he might go into that Corruptor production, as you mentioned, but he didn't panic throw it down. I don't think he's not going to go overboard on it. Yeah, you're right about that. And I mean, we could just see Mutalisk as a counter here, but Mutas are not very good versus BCs because it just takes them years to kill battle cruisers. The yep. battle cruisers Yamato won and then blink out, but uh, there was never actually Yamato cannon research for future. Yeah, no weapon refit at all. I do love the ghosts here too just because uh, steady targeting is really great. It'll one shot a Ravager, one shot a Hydralisk. Really good against Ultras if those guys show up too. I just, it's fantastic. Hellbats here from Future. Does he have the Infernal Pre-Igniter upgrade? He does not, nor is it being researched yet. But yeah, like you said, he's all over with his tech. He's going Cloak for Ghost. Battle Cruisers at the front versus these Queens. Transfuses trying to keep him alive, but Queens just can't get through that plus one ship plating, which means he has four armor versus these Queens. And the health pool is so big. I think the Queens just have to give up on this fifth base entirely. I don't know if they can save it. Well, unless they just draw the battle cruisers away, in which case that works too. Oh, Nihilusia? No, I'm still here. Sorry about that. Oh, yeah, there we go. Oh, and the tactical jump out. This guy needs to get out here too. That's a lot of corruptor. Yeah, uh, it doesn't take second. too many corruptors to deal with a battle cruiser. No, and yeah, it's not mass BC, although it is 11 of them. 11 seems. A little bit high. Also, steady targeting pretty good against Corruptors, too. So we'll see if we can use those defensively in the situation, because these Corruptors are coming in, and they are out for blood. And there's really nothing that can kill them except for Battle Cruisers, and except for some of these Missile Turrets and some of the Ghosts. Oh, Corruptors decided to pull away at the last second. Oh, hey, look. Loco's casting. Wait, no. Somebody from the local clan is casting. That is interesting. Kick him. Somebody, somebody might have been lagging out when watching. I lose you again. Sounds like I lost you again. But that I really apologize, uh, nephew, staying with me. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, that's fine. 
Alrighty, but uh, I, I come back and I see a few corruptors being mm. sort of dealt mm. with by ghosts and battle cruisers. Yep, steady targeting, man. Oh. Good spell. Yeah. I Zergling's mean... trying to get through this wall, and they might be able to just to the help from the siege tank, splash damaging their own guys. Also, battle cruisers just jumping across the map like they own the joint <laughs> third base battle cruiser. Between the second and the third base battle cruiser, one of them's having a bad hitting. time though. Yes, one of them is taking a lot of shots here, and will go down to the score crawler. But he's getting the roach worn infestation pit. <laughs> this Zergling game, man. Zergling roach attack still doing stuff on the other side of the map here against future, but it will be cleaned out by pretty much mass ghost <laughs> right now. <laughs> oh, Yamato cannon onto the corruptors there. Fifth base in a lot of trouble. Why are you going after spore crawlers? Kill the fifth base, battle cruisers. Huh. I mean, there's no like uh, written guide for what to do at this point in the game, but <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're seeing a lot of drones still up for Caleb, so eventually he'll be able oh. to make something else. But I mean, yeah, he's losing these BCs because they don't have jump. Yeah, ju I mean, I guess the jump in was sort of just to distract his opponent and be like, "You got to deal with this." Yeah, please don't kill everything at my third base. Defend your home instead, and in that way it worked. Yeah, and I mean, uh, now we've got uh, Future does have up that fourth base. He's going to start making that planetary, getting them more and more CCs. He's already... Did he, did he have that uh, base, or is he just planning on mining gas there already at the fifth? <laughs> I don't think he ever had it. I think, <laughs> he he, just... <laughs> I think he intended to throw it on the command center and missed, I believe. Oh, okay. But yeah, now Future, I mean, he's going into ghost tanks, and I mean, ghosts are good. There's a reason why Terran's, like, ultimate late game composition has a lot of ghosts. And that's just because they deal with pretty much any unit. Minus yeah, a ton of Banelings, and he's got the tanks to deal with the Banelings. Well, they do bonus damage versus light as well. They do 22 damage per shot versus light with their plus one attack, which oh, yeah, is insane. Oh yeah, they just toast Zerglings. Yep. So yeah, I, it really surprises me that so many Terran players at a high level, at the WCS level, refuse to go for Ghosts against Zerg. And I just don't understand it a lot of the time. They're very, very good. Hellbats wandering into the fourth ace of Caleb here, up along the right side. And Blue Flame Hellbat, pretty good against buildings, as it turns out. Yeah, I mean, uh, Blue Flame, fantastic versus Zerg, who is... Because, I mean, just, you got to have something other than Zerglings to deal with it. And then it's just so handy for harassment. And, I mean, this game, I mean, the supplies have never, like, neither player has reached maxed out, but they still just have such good options available to both of them. And I mean, uh, yeah. we've got nine Broodlords on the way for Caleb now. So 9,000 resources lost for Caleb compared to 5,000 or so from Future. So, so far, been pretty cost efficient with what he's been doing past Future. That said, Caleb's income and the amount of bases he has is just through the roof. One, two, three, four, five, six. He's got seven bases right now. <laughs> and 91 drones to go on all of them. So, yeah, I mean, it's going to. Well, it's going to be Infester, which is nice. If you can Neural Parasite some of the BCs, that'd be a nice win for him, for sure. Oh, yeah. Infestors are very good versus Battle Cruisers because you can just use their abilities, and then they're pretty much just dead weight. But yep. I guess we Ooh, don't have any more Battle Cruisers. Oh, oh, nuclear launch detected. Bottom left corner here. Caleb's base. I don't know what number this is. I feel like it's <laughs> six, maybe. <laughs> we need numbers on the maps in order to identify which base is which, but... All right, there goes that nuke. Giving some spines a bit of a tough time, denying mining. Killing two static defense units, that's pretty good. And dare I say, that's not going to be the uh, last nuke. No, definitely <laughs> there not. There goes another right. Now hitting that fifth base, there's the sixth. Oh, no. This Zerg is scrambling right now. <laughs> Where? I don't even see the ghosts. Oh, there he is, up <laughs> left. There's the one. Okay. And then here's the one at the north. Oh, that base is pretty low too. It really is. Hellbat still a lot of work on it, and this ghost is stuck, man. Steady targeting on a Corruptor takes it down to 21 HP. That's sort of like his uh, last last vengeance on the Zerg. Yes, made it happen. Also, what's great for Infestors uh, against a Terran player in this situation is if you fungal those ghosts, it interrupts the steady targeting channeling and it makes them effectively useless there too. So, yeah, in a big Infestors. battle, fungals are huge. Yeah, particularly when the Zerg's being aggressive because. The time in which ghosts really shine in StarCraft 2 is when the Terran sort of is setting the pace of the game, sort of forcing the Zerg to retreat and whatnot. But if the Zerg does take the fight to the Terran, I mean, it's hard to get off those snipes, particularly if there's Banelings rolling in, if there's Fungals. Oh, that ghost got greedy. Oh, did he? 
Yeah, Ghost tried to go for a second nuke on that bottom left hand base, but there was an overseer there with Zerglings, so no. A little bit, Meanwhile, uh... Hellbat's trying to do stuff here, but Queen's dealing with it, Broodlord's dealing with it quite nicely. That said, 18 drones have gone down, which is really not that many in the grand scheme of things. And here come the ghosts from future, pushing towards this fourth base. Are they just going to kill it straight up with ghost attack? Oh, the oh, Broodlords, oh, the Broodlords! This is so risky for Future to do, but he's getting his money's worth. Now may just that retreat with the hell, covering his escape with a nuke, because why not? Yeah, I don't know if the Queens want... They don't want to get in there. Absolutely not. Is this enough to kill the hatch? It uh, may kill the ghost. Yeah, he's too close to it. He's toast. Uh, maybe just get the out of the ghost? Oh, look at that. Oh, Last second, got out of there in time. Good job, dude. Got eight kills and 3-3 three, three upgrades. That's pretty good stuff. Another nuke going down on that bottom left. That base is just being abused. Yeah, that hatch is going to die for sure. I love what Future is doing here. He's expanding while keeping the Terran player on his back foot. There has been no solid attack from Caleb for a long time now. Oh, the hatch is alive. The nuke wasn't close enough to it to actually kill it. And the ghost goes down. Right side nuke happening here. Oh Some God. corruptors hanging out in the general neighborhood. I love how Future is playing this style. I mean, when Terrans first started going for nukes, I guess they really came in in like a, maybe a year ago or so is when we saw it become sort of a little bit more prevalent. I mean, it's like, why would you throw away money? Nukes so rarely get anything done, but apparently if you throw enough nukes, it just makes your opponent fall apart. Yep. It's really hard to defend, especially when your bases are just so spread out like this. Oh yeah, map really like parasite. It's... Did he just jump? He just battle cruiser tactical jumped into the fifth base <laughs> of Caleb. He's gonna die because the corruptor ball is oh, really Oh yeah, there's terrifying. no getting out for this guy. But oh, tries uh, to get off the Yamato camp. Oh, uh, no, that was a little bit anticlimactic. It was Hellbats coming in with plus three armor. Gonna try to deal with Zerglings. Gonna try to deal with Hydras here too. Actually, not too bad against Hydra. Our Hellbats, if they can get up close enough to them. And they do take down this bottom left-hand base. The Hellbats look at this. Who are still alive, mind you. <laughs> oh, are they going to actually force is, the... Oh, look at that. Not quite focusing that down, but I mean, he could get some of these queens, too. <laughs> yeah, Transfuse is really good. And then the Broodlords come in, and additional queens coming over, and yeah. All the creeps been, like, cleared up mostly, though. Oh. And now Caleb, or now Future says, hey, you just defended the left, now you gotta go right. And you gotta go middle, by the way. Oh, that <laughs> ghost died instantly. Oh. Too close to the spore and the spine there. Oh, yeah. Oh, Liberator flying over too. Oh, ghost going in. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Nuke Liberator <laughs> Oh my gosh! Oh, he neural parasited the ghost! It's a shame that... Does that work? I don't think it does, right? Like, you can't use your opponent's nukes if you neural one of their ghosts, right? Uh, I don't know. I'm gonna be honest. I think I you gotta know. have your own ghost academy, but still, just the fact that he neural parasited that ghost is like, yeah, I see you. Yep, I know what you're doing. I'm ready for you. And Caleb has defended the last few attempted attacks pretty well. I mean, the nukes yeah. were landing all over the place, but the last couple have been shut down. That said, this one's gonna land. Yeah, and I mean, we were talking about the uh, efficiency before and how. I sort of did knock nukes a little bit and say, yeah, you can throw money away in future. Maybe getting to that point, like ghosts are really expensive units. Throw in a nuke with that, and that's like 600 resources or something. And so... Uh, Woo! Right. Liberator count. Oh, oh, boy. Spore is actually fighting the Liberators. Shame they can't attack buildings for future. Oh, nice fungal dodge there. Future got his ghost out just in time. And there goes the nuke. Now, uh, Caleb really has to stay on top of his army here because a uh, round of good snipes, and that's pretty much it for the Zerg. Yes, he needs to make sure he's got detection. He needs to make sure that he's got uh, infestors in position to throw down fungals when the ghosts come up. And is Caleb going back in? He's thinking about it. He's thinking about going back in. He's spreading creep very, very well. Nuke number 20 on the right <laughs> side, I think. Are we at 20 yet? <laughs> we need a counter. Just, yeah, uh... we do. Oh, man. That ghost does oh. get killed, though. Yeah, I like this little Zergling Overseer oh. hit squad that runs around and defends. Oh, like the same spot. Yeah. Ghost is in range of that spore and the spine and just dies. Okay, before the, the base in the bottom lands. left will die. 
but this yep. I think this is getting to the point in which it's getting pretty wasteful for future. Like, uh, he's now pretty much just equal on army supply, but here's an engagement. A lot oh, of ghosts oh, getting oh. caught. Steady Pongles targeting and engaging. Snipes for days off, going down, though. and all the infestors running right into liberators. Oh, that's so many units oh, lost. And the, and the ghosts all survived. All the infestors! Oh my god. That could have gone so good for Kayla, but it went oh so, so bad. <laughs> well, from future. And I mean, Caleb's fighting hard. He's still got a big bank, but that's pretty demoralizing. That was like 5k worth of resources that went down. That was not great. Is there another nuke? Another nuke on the right side. Is that enough to kill? Not enough I to kill the, the hatch, hatch survives, but... yeah. Yeah, but it's going to be super hurt. 200 HP hurt there. And just yeah, look at this. I mean... Look at look at the uh, sort of like a right the furthest right base of future. There's four planetary fortresses there, <laughs> and all the missile turrets in the world. You don't even have to zoom out, and they're just all there. Yep. SCV is getting sacrificed just to free up additional supply for future right now. Well, oh, man, yeah. I mean, uh, I like how Caleb's sort of doing like staying back behind the spores and spines, but. Future is definitely setting the pace of this game for now with all these nukes. Caleb wants to push in though. Yeah, the Broodlords are set up. Where are the ghosts? I don't see them. They're coming down. Here we are. All right. I mean, they don't have too much energy. And there's some no. Vipers in there as well. So the Liberators are pretty strong too. But yeah, overall, I mean, this army is looking pretty good for Caleb. Future's going to have to take a very nice engagement to beat this. And there's not too much gas for future, so if Caleb manages to wipe this army, this could be all that he needs. Oh, a fantastic parasitic oh. bomb going down on all the liberators, adding a fungal in there too. EMPs go down on some of the infestors, a nuke called in on the army. Broodlords are actually getting close to the nuke. Oh, Get out of it there, gets cancelled though. Oh, Some more snipes that's... going down, but there's not many ghosts left, but the sort of 20-minute bio-transition coming out for future. Oh, fungal the EMPs goes have been down. so good. Nice fungal, though. These marines are in trouble now. Oh, man. Another this is just... fungal clears them out. 178 to 137 supply. I think Caleb has taken that engagement and possibly taken the game at this point. Yeah, future is now down and resources lost by like 5,000. He lost so many units. <laughs> the question <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, and now now as a Terran player, it's not a good feeling having a Zerg army like this on your door. He's still got a bank, so he's going to try and make something happen, but uh, it's going to be tough dealing with these Broodlords. The Queens are there to transfuse, so uh, I think Caleb may have done it. He managed to stay together. He managed to get the army he needed. An another nuke going down in that another spot. Another one! Okay, future, I think Future knows how to make his exit with uh, some nukes going down. Oh, there we go. Yeah, he's making 20 marines at a time, but it's just not enough against this many broodlords with 3-3 three, three upgrades, with queen support, oh, with wow. corruptors there too. I didn't even see that the broodlords had 3-3, three, three, like, uh, that yeah. just goes to show how long this game has been going on and how just the late game it's been, because it's not often you see a zerg get 3-3 three, three air upgrades. No, definitely not, but if you're committed this much to broodlord, you might as well go for it. Yeah, so Future's just sitting back here <laughs> turtling in his main base with his 3-3 three, three marines. Uh, killing a lot oh, of brute here lords. Here some widow mines. They're gonna mines. burrow. I mean, uh, I mean, they're exploding on the broodlings though, which yeah. is absolutely oh, a waste of time. Some tanks coming up for a flank. Picks uh, off an infestor yeah, or two. Yeah, yeah, we didn't mention that there's infestors underneath this, so the marines can't just stim underneath it. This is gonna be painful for future. He's yeah, going he's for going it, for it that though. Oh, there's the fungals. Uh, there's the fungal. Another fungal. <laughs> oh marines. man, those poor marines. <laughs> Another question mark, and GG. <laughs> oh man, the level of banter in that game. Sure should I was casting this, huh? What a game this is. I'm not sure. I got, as with a lot of the replays, I usually post them in the description, but got this one off uh, SC2 replay stats, so. Oh, okay, cool. It's a great game, I'm jealous. <laughs> oh yeah, this is awesome. This is why you just grab a replay and see what you get, and this was a good one. Mm -hmm. Definitely worth worth the time to cast for sure. So yeah, future trying to go the unorthodox strat, making the ghosts happen, landing about it really felt like twenty nukes by the end of the game for sure, but not enough to deal with the ending composition of Infester, Broodlord, Corruptor, Queen. 
with some Zerglings mixed in for good measure out of Caleb. Caleb just dealt with the nukes, dealt with the Battlecruiser harass, got up the composition that he wanted against what uh, Future was going for, and just pushed and won. Yeah, but I mean, that was, that was a fantastic game to see all the late game units. And so, uh, I mean, any any TVZ, this is what you usually hope for in like a TVZ these days. So it yes. was fantastic to see, fantastic to cast. So uh, yeah, this has been, I guess, uh, Falcon Paladin and Laughing Games, and I appreciate you guys tuning in to watch. Yeah, take care. We'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.